Suzanne Craig was part of the New York Times team that won the Pulitzer Prize in 2019 for an 18-month investigation that uncovered the Trump family's history of tax dodges. She's also an MSNBC contributor. She joins me now. For those of you who are New York Times readers, um, it is a story the likes of which I, I don't believe you've ever seen. It was, it was pages and pages and pages long yeah. of uh, very deep dive stuff, uh, Suzanne. When you heard these charges and the referral of this case to the Department of Justice and the IRS and, and Letitia James's um, uh, civil suit, how much of what you heard was the work that you had done back, in, uh, back before you won the Pulitzer Prize? Well, the, the allegations were cer certainly familiar to us. We had looked um, for, you know, as you said, we'd, we'd done 18 months of work, and that work didn't look at some of the current stuff that she's looking at, but the storyline was certainly familiar. And, and what we found when we were doing our work on that piece that ran in, in 2018, we found that the family had repeatedly engaged in this, you know, asset inflation where they, you know, they had assets, but it was to their advantage in cases to either inflate the assets or to, to, to make them look like they were worth less money in order for financial or for their own personal gain. Um, and that's now a thread that's carrying through to her investigation. What What is really just, and I've had a lot of time now to read her complaint. What is just breathtaking about it is not just the number of examples, but the documentation that they have and the cooperating witnesses. In this case, it's mainly banks and insurance companies. And it's not just that they were saying an asset was worth you know, one amount and then another. They were deceiving um, financial institutions. They were hiding information from them. I mean, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's just in its, in its completeness, it's quite something, the document. And of course, some people in our audience would say, uh, they don't want a civil suit. They want a they want a criminal uh, right. prosecution. But in this case, she is going after. I, I think she set a floor of about two hundred and fifty million dollars that she argues that uh, residents of New York State, taxpayers of New York State, were defrauded of. Uh, I talked to Michael Cohen yesterday, who thinks that that number could be substantially higher in the seven hundred and fifty million to a billion dollar range. His argument is this kind of money, if if the Trump uh, organization or family is forced to pay it, would wipe them out. Well, it, it could go higher or it could be lower, and I want to caution people on that. This, you know, could go to a trial. It could reach a settlement. The Trump Organization has tried to settle it. That could still happen. We don't have their response yet. They'll they'll file, you know, a, a pending a settlement in between. They're going to file a response. We really don't know where it's going to land, but that's a lot of money. Two hundred and fifty million. Let's just say it lands on that, or even two hundred. 150 if we go lower that's still a lot of money to an organization that for the most part and and other work that we have done we obtained his taxes corporate and personal through 2018 and you can see there's it's very hard in that information to find any one of his businesses that makes money this isn't somebody who's walking around with a huge amount of cash just to be able to settle a case like this a civil case I remember when this first came out, you and I were talking about the fact that there were people around, particularly in New York, who roll in these circles of financing and, and, and buildings and stuff, who say, um, what, what happened there what was common. People did that. Uh, investors would um, overvalue their properties for purposes of getting bank loans, yeah. undervalue them for purposes of taxes, overvalue them for purposes of insurance. What, in your mind, as you've studied this and read this, uh, this complaint, causes it, where's that line between sure. civil and criminal? Well, I, I think of two things when you say that. The first one is everybody does it isn't an excuse, it's a confession. So that's one thing. And then when I look at this case, it's not just, you know, he went into a magazine and said, I'm worth $5 billion and, and put some paper in front of them to convince them of that, and they ran a story. He went into a financial institution, and let's just take a Deutsche Bank as an example. He went in and he would say, my assets, my, my complete picture, here is my financial statement. I am worth so many billion dollars. He certified that, and, and that's not just the asset that they were looking, you know, he was looking to get a, a loan against. That's all of them. He certified it. He certified it year after year, and he did that in order to get a better rate, and that's where you cross the line. He did that with banks. He did that with insurance companies, and in some cases, he not just said it's worth that. He said, it's worth it, and I have... I have uh, appraisals to back this up when none existed. So he deceived them, he lied to them, and he certified it year after year for personal gain. 
Suzanne, thank you for your excellent reporting uh, and for joining us this morning. Suzanne Craig is a Pulitzer thank Prize you. winning investigative reporter with The New York Times.